Sarah, hi, welcome to the podcast. Hi, I'm so excited. You're so sweet, Nicole. I am so excited, you guys. Let me tell you about Sarah. I hope you're sitting down because I've got so many things to say about Sarah and her wonderful ministry. Quick little backstory, you guys. I'm just like starting 1212, have no earthly idea what I'm doing. Find them online. And I'm like, okay, they're having this like retreat conference thing. I've got to go. It's like way past the deadline to sign up, reach out to Sarah. I just, I send an email and I'm like, Lord, I don't know what you're going to do. And I just said, Hey, can I please come? Like, I don't need anything. I don't need those sweet, you know, boxes. No, nothing. Just can I please come and sit in the back? And she said, yes, come. And it, that experience changed my life. It literally changed my life and how I, how I am as a leader, how I run um, twelve twelve, just how we operate as a ministry. Again, I had no clue what I was doing. You know, I didn't even know that we could. I didn't even know that you could start something like this and make an impact for the kingdom in this way. Mm -hmm. And what Refresh has done, what you have done for just like my path in the ministry's path is amazing. So I am so grateful for you. I am honored just to be able to chat with you today. Oh, this is such a joy. I I love those beginning stages because girl, I was just figuring it out too. So we were just having conversations about like, how do we do this thing? I don't know. Right, man. So Sarah, I, I'm just so excited to just chat with you talking about activating kingdom purpose and just really mm-hmm. stepping into God or stepping into what God has called us to do. Yeah. So before we jump in, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about you and your sweet family and just all the things? Yeah. Um, I've got four kiddos and my husband and I live in McKinney, Texas. And so we've got from ranging from 10 all the way down to one. So I've got one napping, hoping she stays <laughs> napping. So it's just kind of crazy, crazy life. I started this ministry called Refresh about 10 years ago, right? Um, we were actually right after Asher was born, our first child, I'd quit my job, had my first kid and just felt like there's gifts that are going dormant in my life that I really felt like God was tapping on for me to use and said yes. And so here we are 10 years later, and I am loving every minute of motherhood and ministry all wrapped into one. So Yes. Okay, yeah. really quick. Now I'm I'm asking this for myself because okay. <laughs> here I struggle with this a little bit, but I would love to know then about your rhythm, your motherhood and ministry rhythm. Like what mm-hmm. does that look like for you? I love that you said rhythm because I feel like we all want to ask the question, like, how do you balance it all? Yes. Balance just doesn't exist. No. Yeah. It does not exist. Rhythm is, I love that. I'm going to adopt that word. Um, Yeah. Because that's really, that's what it is. And honestly, in our life, uh, my husband's an entrepreneur. We have like refresh. We'll have events at different times during the year. And so it's really seasonal is what it is. And we yeah. will take, we also take these long trips with our kids. We'll take the kids out of school. We'll go. I know that's not always something everybody can do, but we just have created our life kind of seasonally. And it's not mm-hmm. that when I've got events going for refresh, I'm completely neglecting my kids, but there is an element that when we've got an event coming that mom's a little bit less available. Like there's not Mm -hmm. as many dinners on the table things, my rhythms in my family life just shift. And I kind of see it like this, like shifting revolving (laughs) tray, if you will, where, Mm -hmm. you know, the Lord's given me this ministry to steward these kids to steward. Like, um, I help my husband with some of our business stuff and there's just seasons where the kind of revolving tray shifts and my kids are just like the majority of my output is going towards them and we'll be on a trip and I will completely shut off or I'm in a season where they've got a lot going on with sports. And so I'm all in for, for that for a couple of weeks. Um, but then, you know, the tray revolves and they, mm-hmm. um, get to see, that life isn't all about them. And, um, you know, that mom and dad have some things that we've got to put our hands to that we've been called to steward. And so, yeah. Um, and you know, taking it down to daily rhythms, I, 
I am still working that one out, but, (laughs) um, you know, I just try to really focus on blocking, like really time blocking what I'm going to do during the day and knowing like, you know, some days it's a heavy refresh day where I've got a lot of things that have to happen for the Mm -hmm. ministry. And, um, my house is going to look like a bomb went off and my husband knows like it's going to look like a bomb went off and we're going out to dinner tonight. So, and that's okay. And I've learned to just, uh, show grace for myself. My family has grace for me and, um, and it's just, it's okay. It works. And we're all in a space where we're, um, I, I love that, that our rhythms are, are pretty seasonal. Yes. And you said something so important just about you are giving yourself grace because I think we're just so hard on ourselves sometimes and just think that everything has to be done right now. It has to be done perfectly before, you know, we can kind of move on. Um, and just having that grace to say, Hey, if there are dishes in the sink for the week, like it's going to be okay. (laughs) Totally. You know? So I love that. Well then let's, I would love, love, love to get just your perspective about activating our kingdom purpose. Like what does that look like? to you? Um, I mean, I love this question. This is like my (laughs) whole passion, my whole heart. We actually developed this. um, It's, it's not even a course. We used to do it retreat. I don't know if we did it when you were there that year, but dream lab. And it's like this process and it's really, I kind of just put on paper the process I went through with the Lord. And, um, because I, I think here's the deal is we can get busy with anything. We can mm-hmm. like do all the things. And I think as women, um, what I what I even noticed about myself is I would tend to just trade busyness for purpose and Ooh, yeah. see that like, oh, okay, I'm running here, I'm doing this, I'm accomplishing this for my kids, I'm helping them with their homework, da 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 da. And like just shoving my schedule full of things that actually don't hold value or weight. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I can get before the Lord, surrender, take time to partner with him in a place of um, devotion and intimacy and say, and, and not just that, but say, Hey Lord, I want to partner with you. And so I'm going to need you to like share with me what it is you want me to do. And Mm -hmm. how do I accomplish that with you? And so all of a sudden, my busyness turns into just a purpose-filled, intentional life. And do I get it right every day? No, I have kind of like wild days where I'm just like, I don't even know what I did today because I've just been (laughs) running around like shaking my head chopped off. But all of a sudden, when I'm at soccer with my son, there's there's more purpose behind that because I'm intentional about where I am in that very moment, because I know when I get home, I got to work on some things for this other thing that the Lord's put in my life. And so, um, yeah, it's so important. And I think as women, we can put it on the back burner because we just decide, you know, when I do this, I'll get, I'll do that. Or Mm -hmm. when I get a husband, maybe I'll, you know, step out in that or when I, and my kids are in school or when this, whatever it is. And so, man, it couldn't be more important to partner with the Lord. Yeah. So God being the CEO, yeah, that has been, you know, so big for me because I think I, I can a hundred percent relate of just being busy and just like trying to do all of the things. I mean, like I would just try whatever because either I felt um, a, a comparison pull or whatnot and just mm-hmm. throw it and see if it's stuck on the wall. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's good. Instead yeah. of being, you know, super intentional, you know, but most importantly, partnering with the Lord to say, yeah. what is it that you want to accomplish in and through me in this ministry? And there's this really great filter that I love to use is, am I stewarding or am I striving? And oh, oh, you yes. can break that down <laughs> even to like a daily moment by moment, because I know when I've crossed into striving mm-hmm. and, you know, striving comes through like when we're comparing, when we're scrolling too long, when we're seeing someone else's ministry, someone else's motherhood, someone else who's got married and has kids and I didn't. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden those kind of, which again, a lot, most of that is comparison sends you into this place of striving, being discontent with where I am and what I have and the people that God has given me to steward in my life and under my influence. And Mm -hmm. so I always have to go back to that as just a really great filter because when I'm stewarding, 
there's a grace there and there's a rest there that I'm in. And I don't, you know, I, I, I'm not going to get burnt out. I'm not going to get to the place where I can't handle it anymore because no, I'm operating under a grace and where the grace is, the rest is. So we don't have to let go and disconnect and be on a vacation to have rest. We really just need to enter into like a partnership where we're truly stewarding what God's given us. Yes. Okay, Sarah. So if we find ourselves in that striving kind of scenario, you know, what, how can we one realize that we're, we're kind of in that space and then what can we do to, to pull out of that? Yeah. I think for me, I'll, I'll recognize when I'm striving because I'm, um, honestly, a lot of it's physical for me. I'll Mm -hmm. get knots in the bottom of my back. Yeah. I get, I won't be eating quite right because I'm just like too stressed out to even eat or, um, Yeah, just that overwhelmed sense in your heart. I mean, you know when you're overwhelmed. And unfortunately, you know, we run at such a pace that I think that that becomes the standard, like that stressed Mm. out, overworked, over pushing, striving standard. And so it's almost hard sometimes when you've been running at that pace to take a few steps back and realize that's not a healthy space for me. And I, I can sense that I am trying to do something that's outside of what God's just asking me to be obedient in today. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, you know, can take the weight off is knowing, you know, God's not asking me to build some, um, worldwide ministry because that's what I, the vision I see in my heart. No, he's, he's asking me to say yes to what he has for me today and take the next step today. And sometimes I don't know what that is. I don't know what's next for refresh or the ministry or my kids or what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. And that's when I know I'm going to either start striving right now, or I need to take some time to really dream and think and, um, pray and press in to what he is saying. And, And he'll share, he will, if you press in and listen, you will hear his plans and strategies. And then it's just simple obedience on the other side of that. Oh, you said so many powerful things. It's just getting quiet with the Lord and yeah. allowing him to kind of direct your steps. And mm-hmm. then just he's going to come up with the strategies and all of I, yeah. I love that. Because again, we try, especially if the Lord has given us such a powerful God dream and like, mm-hmm. you know, we try to manipulate and just move it and form it into what we think that it's yeah. it's supposed to be. Yeah. you know, instead of allowing the Lord to, to do what he's going to do. Yeah. Yeah. And every year after we have a big event or something happens in the ministry, you know, a big uh, milestone, I, you know, and I'm in that space now where as soon as refresh is done at the end of this month, <laughs> um, this next big event, I, I'll take some steps back. I'll take a really big pause and um, I will, I won't move forward and I'll wait and I'll listen. And the thing is, you know, we see it over and over in scripture where even um, places where Jesus is giving to the disciples different strategies or um, when God's giving Moses strategies, you know, it's never like, oh, hey, let me give you one, two, three, four, five. Here's the steps. This is what it's going to turn out like. And then if you do this, then this is going to happen. No, I mean, the strategies of God are, um, obscure most times, honestly, (laughs) contradictory to probably to what my flesh would think is the next step. And it's always just this kind of, um, uh, like a baby step almost in a big vision. And so, um, it's just being obedient to that, no matter how contrary to what, oh gosh, no, I think we should be doing this or we should, we got to grow. If we're going to grow, we can only do it this way. Um, and it's just being obedient to those small steps that might just seem completely crazy that you sense the Lord is saying, but you've got to have the space to hear him, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, we can't hear him if we are running at a hundred miles an hour. Yes. Yeah, that powerful pause. That's mm-hmm. so huge. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for, for sure. sharing that. Cause I'm like, okay, Lord, I hear you. I'm going to pause. <laughs> yeah. So Sarah, what would you say to that, to that woman out there that's listening is just that she, she has a God dream, but mm-hmm. maybe does not know kind of first steps and just is like, how can she activate it? Like what is the first, mm-hmm. you know, maybe first thing or the first few things that she can do or just what encouragement would you share? Yeah. 
You know, I think that's where a lot of dreams die is in um, our inability to step out. Mm, yeah. And, um, you know, the thing with the partnership with the Lord is, you, you know, we think, okay, the God's asked me to do this thing and he's going to like move my arms to make it happen. That partnership means there's two people involved. And so there's um, a responsibility that we play and, you know, and you think about responsibility, that word response being in there. And what is our response to what God is asking us to do? What's our response to what God's putting in our heart? Are you willing to step out? And I would say to that girl, I think there's probably something in your mind that you know you're supposed to do. And maybe it feels too much or too big, or there's fear kind of standing in the way. My challenge would be for you to step out, even if it's a small step to do something, because once we take action, once we get in motion, all of a sudden things in our life start coming alive in ways that we never even knew possible. When I started Refresh, it, I just thought, oh, I'm a great hostess at my house. Never once was I like, I never want to speak. I never want to be seen. I, none of that stuff was mm -hmm. in my heart or mine. I just thought, well, I've got a house and I can open it up and I'll invite people over and I'll get other people to share. And wouldn't you know, the minute I stepped out and actually started doing some of these things, God started highlighting other gifts in my life that had always been there. I just didn't know they were there. And it was the gift to speak and communicate and share and all of these things. And so, but it would have never come alive in me had I never taken that first step that seemed so insignificant and so pointless and crazy. And why did I even think I needed to do that? Um, you know, and now here you are and all of these gifts have come alive and been activated in my life because of that movement. Yes. So take the first step. Yeah. Love it. Sarah, thank you so yes. much. I just, I adore you. I think that you are just so fabulous and just mm -hmm. how you serve. And I love your heart for God and for his people. So thank, thank you. you for all that you do. Well, tell everybody really quick, like where they can find you online, where they can find Refresh. Okay. All the things are at <laughs> refreshwomen.org. And it's, um, we've got lots coming up. We've got a big virtual event at the end of the month um, that's going to air. And really, we're just hoping women would gather in their homes. Uh, we cur curated a day packed full of incredible sessions that are designed for you to be interacting um, with your people in your homes. And so we hope that this will really bless the women. And we pray that it's a space that uh, women could dream, not only dream, but feel activated in what God's called them to do. Yes. Amen. I'm so excited. <laughs> Me too. So, so excited. Well, I have one last uh, question for you just because, sure. you know, you, well, one, God, he's so great and he really uses our stories just to, you know, change the world and, and make yeah. an impact for him and for the kingdom. And I just think that you do such an amazing job at just stepping out and, you know, and, and walking in your purpose. And so how have your puzzle pieces, you know, led you to where you are today? Yeah. That's, I love that question. And I feel like the way you word that is so beautiful because it's exactly what it is, you know, if, and if there wasn't, it's like these pieces that I don't think all necessarily had to be chronological, but they all fit together, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think for me, um, you know, talking to that girl who's got something in her heart, but maybe fearful to step out. I'm like, I was that girl and I still find myself wanting to be that girl. And so I have such a compassion for that, but it was time after time of coming up to this, like almost like coming up against a barrier that I didn't think I could break through getting up on a stage in front of, you know, 600 people thinking like I cannot physically, I don't know that I could grab the mic mm -hmm. and actually do this, but saying, you know what? I'm going to do it anyways, and I'm going to do it scared out of my mind. And then the next, and then it's like, all of a sudden you look back on the puzzle that's like all coming together and you think, man, thank God I like said yes to that piece because then this piece would have never been possible. And so, um, I just, I, it is really fun to reflect because 
you know, now there's so many things that come so easy or so natural, but that was because I got up against some really difficult barriers, some really hardcore fear. And I rivaled it with just me saying, I will not back down to what I know. This is the enemy. And, you know, just deciphering like, this is the enemy. He wants to stop me from stepping in my kingdom purposes. So I won't back down and he will not win. Woo. Amen. Thanks, Sarah. (laughs) You're welcome. I love you.